Hello my darlings, welcome to a new video here on my channel. The first video after Vlogmas. You guys are going to be seeing this on Boxing Day. So I hope you had a fabulous Christmas. Obviously I am pre-filming this video. But as we are approaching the end of a decade, we are moving back to the 20s. In just a few days it's going to be 2020 and I've never done a throwback video here on my channel before. I know that there was that trend, I think it was last year, to look at old photos and look at your style evolution and I never did it even though so many people tagged me in that video trend and I had so many requests. But I thought as we're going to be moving into a new decade now is a fantastic time to look back over the past 10 years and see how our style has evolved. Stay tuned if you you want to see a video all about the top trends for not just myself but for everyone over the last decade because that is going to be coming your way very soon. The most iconic products and the things that we all as a collective bought into the most over the last 10 years. But today, just for a little bit of fun, we're going to be looking back over my personal style over the last 10 years. So how my style has changed between 2010 and 2020. So I logged in to my Facebook to look for some really old photos and I haven't logged into my Facebook in about eight months I had a lot of direct messages from people I used to go to school with asking for favours and things like that. I'm sure other influencers can definitely relate but it was very entertaining to say the least and I have scrolled all the way back to my photos from 2009 onwards. Obviously a lot of these photos um, are pretty old school in style and not the highest quality but we're going to be focusing on what I'm wearing and I'm going to discuss how my style has changed over the past decade so I hope you enjoy a bit of a, a, bit of a laugh as I show you my old photos. I'd love to know if any of you guys do this as well. Maybe at the same time while you've got this video on in the background, have a look through your old photos. I think it's really interesting and funny to see how your style has changed in 10 years. So I'm gonna be holding my old laptop up here. I don't even have Facebook logged in on my new one. And the first photo that I shared in 2010 is this one here at Piccadilly Circus. Judging from the girls that I'm with, I think this was when I was at Royal Holloway University. Didn't think it was that long ago ago that I was in university. Maybe I'm wrong, but I am wearing what looks like a pair of multi-seam tights. I think that tights were a big thing back then and they've really done a full loop. I'm sure that's going to be a recurring theme here that so many things are not really very new. Um, and then I appear to have some kind of bustier top on, a puffy skirt and a jacket that very much looks like it's made from a kind of quilt. <laughs> I think back then I was really trying to prove that I was into fashion, so I would buy really unusual pieces that I loved but I didn't really know how to style them together. I knew that I loved the material on the skirt as well, I'm not sure if we can zoom in. I do remember this skirt, it really was quite reminiscent of a pair of old curtains. <laughs> and of course I wanted that voluminous hair so I used to kind of back comb the crown part of my hair and then clip it in to make it as bouffant as possible. That was very much, we used to call them Raz or like Sloan kind of hairstyles back in the day so um, let me know if you can relate. There's actually quite a few pictures pictures of me wearing this jacket um, and again you can see the hairstyle. This is not even my natural hair colour, this is me trying to colour my hair blonde at home. It definitely hadn't heard of toner back then. If I had any special events I also used to like to make my dresses to ensure that they were unlike anything else, anything that my friends had and also we used to go to London maybe once every six months or once a year and I loved looking at and trying on all the beautiful dresses in Harrods. I tried on dresses from brands like Tempoli and Valentino and then I used to try and copy them and basically make myself a dupe at home. This is a dress that I made, I think it was inspired by a Valentino one with a really voluminous skirt and it had a boned corset. Looking back, I mean, it's not bad for something that a teenager made but not quite something I would wear today. So this photo here is of my prom dress. This is from a brand called Betsy Johnson and we found this in the Betsy Johnson boutique on Floral Street in Covent Garden. I absolutely love this dress and I got so much wear out of it. I actually wore it as a bridesmaid dress or the bridesmaid dress to my brother's wedding. I loved the shape of the corset with the sweetheart neckline. I love the pink skirt. I think those shoes were from Ted Baker and then I had a little pashmina as well. This is something, this is an outfit that I am actually very proud of. I think it still looks 
looks really lovely and if I was younger and going back to my May ball I probably would wear this again I think it was a really really lovely dress I think back then there weren't quite as many options when it comes to brands for prom dresses certainly where I used to live on the border of Wales there were not really any nice boutiques to buy dresses and I don't even think we did any online shopping back then this is 10 years ago whereas now you've got brands like Lipsy and House of CB and Chi Chi London they definitely were not around back when I was looking for a prom dress oh my goodness you guys have to tell me if your school used to have neon parties as well I've just come across this picture where I'm wearing a neon turquoise tank top and a homemade very neon tutu I used to spend hours making tutus I had them in so many different colors but neon parties were definitely a phase that we went through at school and I used to fully take part as you can see I think I probably was wearing pink neon fishnet stockings as well and sparkly shoes it looks like I've actually gone on false lashes with neon or UV blue at the tips as well. Um, and then I've obviously got some neon face paint, so that was definitely a phase, one that I'm very glad. I have grown out of. Oh yes, here's a picture of the full gang and I am wearing neon pink fishnet stockings. <gasps> oh how times change. So this was 10 years ago when I visited Tanzania to climb Kilimanjaro. I'm wearing a brown waterproof Eddie the Eagle sunglasses with little kind of peaks over the top of them and I've got like an orange sack over my rucksack. This was in the Lesotho mountain range. We went to do some charity work before climbing Kilimanjaro and I think I just kept my hair in pigtails, plaits the whole time. That little blue thing in the cord coming over my shoulder is a platypus so that I could drink water while um, hiking. But I like to think that I would definitely have found a more chic way of hiking if I was to do this kind of expedition again. But it was definitely practicality over style. I have to say I'm skipping through so many embarrassing photos. Honestly, my Facebook is a treasure chest of embarrassment. But this dress I used to love. I'm clearly wearing a hugely push-up bra because still to this day I do not have boobs that look like that um, but it was a sequin kind of stretchy material on the top and then netting it down at the bottom I think this might even have been like a Christmas dress party looks like I'm wearing I'm I'm clutching a bottle of WKD how classy is that oh my goodness um, I didn't know how to curl my hair properly but I was probably still using the Jose Bear curler that I use today and it looks like I'm wearing some kind of boy friendship bracelet I probably gave the other half to my boyfriend of the time but but to be honest I probably still would wear a dress like this but again there are so many nicer ones available with sport for choice these days and you really didn't have that much choice back in 2010. I mean this photo just sums it up. I'm in the bathrooms of a club called Oceana in Cardiff using the hand dryer as a wind machine to blow my hair and I'm clutching what looks like a Father Christmas hat. Perfect timing. This was um, December the 27th 2009. Speaking of Oceana in Cardiff, if you guys watched the Gavin and Stacey Christmas special yesterday let me know what you thought. I am so excited to watch it and um, many of the nightclub scenes are actually filmed in this very nightclub. Speaking of outfits that I made Made myself. This was one of the ones that I am most proud of. So our school disco was themed around your initials so you had to use your initials to come up with something um, to dress as. So I took JF and made it junk food and went as a bag or box of McDonald's chips. I made this out of cardboard um, and got myself some red tights. It's definitely the fancy dress costume that I'm most proud of. I'm wearing hideous false lashes again in this picture but if you look very closely you can see that I even made myself little Little packets of McDonald's um, chips earrings out of clay that was something I used to love doing back then making really fun like junk food themed and sweetie themed jewelry I actually had a little business called fiction jewelry um, and I made myself some Fimo clay chip earrings <laughs> another nightclub photo I think this one was taken in Tiger Tiger this time in Cardiff I actually used to really like this outfit and I still love this silhouette so I'm afraid I don't have one where I'm standing up but this skirt was a really voluminous skirt black with pink flowers on it and then I cinched in my waist with a really thick black waist belt I'm still wearing that boy's bracelet I wonder who that was and then I've got a pink tank top on clearly I'm wearing um, very shiny skin color Colored tights which I don't think I would wear um, these days at least I think they have become a lot more natural in style these skin color tights and then I clearly had never heard of a strapless bra because there are a lot of bra straps going on in this picture and I was clearly a very big fan of heavy eye makeup which I've definitely paired back in the more recent years oh and I remember this cardigan so this cardigan was one of my first purchases from top
Topshop. I remember back in the day feeling that Topshop was a little bit too old for me, whereas now sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit too old for Topshop. But this I probably would have picked up in the very small Topshop in Hereford, the nearest town to where we lived, and this was on my friend Steph's birthday party. We went to a Mexican before doing karaoke at Tiger Tiger. Okay, this photo from April 2010. I clearly thought this was a really great look, the fact that I decided to pose with my big new camera. Um, but this body, I remember this, it's got almost that blue and white vintage pattern on it. It was from Abercrombie & Fitch. It's obviously on one of our many trips to London. I used to pick up so many vest tops from Abercrombie and I think this cardigan was also from there. It was just the brand to wear, especially, especially for my kind of age group, that with the big ruffled messy hair, that was definitely the look back then. I think I'm wearing pink lipstick and eyebrows just were not a thing then. I remember having overly plucked eyebrows was the look as opposed to the slightly more natural bushy brows that we all love today. I don't even know what I've got in my hair and these big pink heart earrings. Don't think I would be seen wearing either of those two accessories now. And I would say this is pretty much what I used to wear most of the time on my off days when I was being a little bit more casual. A pair of Ugg boots, skinny jeans. I can't even remember the last time I wore skinny jeans like this, especially not denim. I've probably worn white ones in the past year or so. Um, and again, another Abercrombie vest top and some kind of accessory in my hair. I was all about the accessories and everyone was wearing Ugg boots back then. So this was probably my day-to-day -day uniform and more often than not had a camera in my hand as well. This was actually at um, a big manor house nearby and we were shooting our textiles projects for our A-levels, I think it would have been back then. And this is a photo where I'm wearing the dress that I made. It was inspired by one of the ones which I tried on in Harrods in London. Speaking of hair accessories, I actually really remember this day. Oh, I have an iPhone in this picture. This was 25th of May 2010. Uh, once again wearing that Abercrombie bodice and the same Abercrombie cardigan, or maybe it's a different one, and skinny jeans and a pink belt. Not sure they all go together, but clearly I loved the individual elements of the outfit. I think that's more what I used to go for back um, in 2010. I was definitely a fan of Bodycon back in 2010. I have got a gold Chanel bag. I cannot say whether this is real or not, probably not sadly, um, but whether it's a black bodycon dress or a bodycon skirt, it was definitely about showing off my silhouette back then and all about, the, all about the padded bras and clearly the nude tights as well. There's quite a few outfits where I'm wearing a bodycon. I tend to feel a little bit self-conscious in bodycon these days, um, but for a special occasion then I probably would still wear it. I did have, I don't know if I'll be able to find a picture, a pink dress which was from French Connection which I used to love. It looked a little bit like Hervé Leger. I don't know if I would have known it at the time, but I used to feel amazing in that dress. I did try and buy one um, about four or five years ago and yeah, could not fit into it anymore. And here's another photo that probably does not need to be brought up on the internet these days, but this is what I decided to wear going out in Ibiza. This was our end of school wild holiday. I don't know what that t-shirt is. I think it might actually be one of mum's old t-shirts from a holiday, but I clearly liked the sequin. I think it was parrot on the front. And do you remember that trend of tiny, tiny micro, micro shorts made of this super stretchy metallic fabric? That's what I decided to wear to go out in Ibiza. I definitely wouldn't have worn that in England, but I mean, look how tiny my legs were, so brown. Um, I wouldn't wear this today. Speaking of Gavin and Stacey, I'm pretty sure this picture was actually taken on Barry Island, the friend that I'm with um, used to live, I think it was Port Talbot, which was nearby. And once again, I'm wearing that Abercrombie top. It was clearly a favorite. Ankle boots, which do not go with my skinny jeans. And a very another very figure-hugging, silhouette-hugging outfit. If you watched my fashion mistakes to avoid video or style secrets, that everyone needs to know video. I was mentioning how you should try and balance out your silhouette with either voluminous top half or bottom half and never either voluminous or tight on both top and bottom. So I definitely uh, didn't know that fashion rule back when I was 18. I'm actually finding it really hard because there are so many photos. Most of them are when I was going out clubbing or on holiday in Ibiza, many of which I cannot share on screen. <laughs> but this whole time we've literally just been in one year. There are so many photos. I'm not actually sure what I'm wearing on my bottom half here, but I think this was at Creamfields Festival, so I'm wearing a barber jacket, a sequin top, a bum bag, wellies, a neon builder's vest, those blue eyelashes, I don't know what my obsession with those blue eyelashes was, and God knows how I managed to wear them so many times, um, and I think I'm probably just wearing denim hot pants, but judging by that little line at the top of my legs, I think I am wearing nude tights again. Not really sure what I was going for with this look, um, and not one that I would care to repeat. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is really funny. So we actually won a competition to go to Creamfields and it included getting a limo from Manchester Centre to Creamfields. So that's where we are in this picture with all our camping gear. Once again, nude tight. And then the jumper, I'll see if I can find a better picture of this jumper. It was from a brand called Ashish, which I got in Topshop. And I remember this jumper was over a hundred pounds and it was really, um, very special to me, it was a very expensive thing at that time. Nude tights, and it looks like I'm wearing welly socks. <laughs> Once again, big statement earrings, and I think the jumper has sequin bunny rabbits on it, interesting. So I'm gonna skip through a little bit faster now because that is a whole decade ago, and I think it's more interesting to see how my style has evolved over the more recent years. I say recent, this next photo is from 2012, so we're entering the Charlie years now. This was taken on my 21st birthday in Rome. Charlie surprised me and my mum to a trip to Rome, and here you can see where my style is starting to come in. I have just discovered Reese. A lot of my clothes um, are from Reese. I then went and got a job there so that I could get the staff discount and my first Mulberry Bayswater. Mulberry and Reese were two brands that I really aspired to and would definitely save up for. I'm not sure what that necklace is but I do remember I had a big obsession with chunky necklaces from Zara and light coloured jeans so you can see where my style is starting to come into play here. There's some classic trend pieces emerging like pearl earrings, a pearl necklace which I think was actually a 21st birthday present gift and then another lovely quality jumper from Reese and I wore this to absolute death. I had to actually get rid of it because it had so many holes in it but I did really used to get a lot of wear out of my investment pieces as I do now. You can see I'm starting to love lighter colours. This jacket from Zara again was something which I used to wear a lot of. Don't really know what was going on with these trousers. I think they were a little bit of a fashion fail. Um, another really chunky jumper. I think I still have that top actually. Bag I remember from Whistles. I had I had that one and mum had a really similar one. And then those wedge shoes were from Reese and again, I got so much wear out of them. In fact, I think I bought them the next year again in a slightly different colorway because they were so comfortable and being petite, I was always looking for comfortable shoes to give me a bit of a height boost. This is a photo from a work trip to New York. I've got, actually I think I'm borrowing that bag from um, my friend Vicky. A lovely cashmere pom-pom hat, definitely something that I would wear today. I probably wouldn't mix the light and the dark quite so much, um, but yeah, an outfit that I'm pretty proud of. This was back in... 2015 though so we clearly into my blogging days here because those boots were actually one of the very first things that I was gifted they were definitely the first fashion thing that I was ever gifted and that was just mind-blowing to me the fact that my little website fashionmumbler.com could lead to brands actually sending me things and they were from a company called Duo Boots. Around the 2014-2015 these were the years when I was getting my first job. I used to work in a software company and then of course I had my blog ticking along at the side and my wardrobe I think reflects it in that it's quite monochrome. It goes from being really colourful in the years before to being pretty monochrome. I had this black and white Celine bag. Um, I used to wear obviously my white Zara coat. I used to wear black roll necks quite quite a lot and then here even on a non-working day I'm wearing black and white shoes, a black and white bag but then I do have a nice faux fur collar coat, a little bit more um, reminiscent of my style today. I think this was actually my first ever blog outfit post. The skirt, I think I still have it, in fact I'm pretty sure I do just because too many memories to get rid of it. It is a silhouette that I would wear today, the fit and flare, so I've got the top which I think was either Reese or Whistles classic black sunglasses, I would still wear those today, not so much the necklace, I've not been a fan of big chunky necklaces for quite a while now, my white Chanel watch which I may or may, no, may, or may not have got from a market in Thailand, um, I didn't really care about having non-authentic products back then let's say. High-waisted skirt, love that, and as I said fit and flare, definitely still absolutely love that silhouette, and clearly I was already becoming a fan of that midi, mid-length length on the skirts as opposed to the much shorter skirts which I've been wearing just a few years before. Black tights and black boots, I think the boots were from Reese and I absolutely loved them, they had like a woven section at the back. Again, really really high heel, I wore heels which are even higher than ones which I would dare to wear today just to give myself a height boost and I think this is a kind of outfit that again I would have worn to the office. I think my graduation outfit is a little glimpse into my style today, we've got that fit and flare silhouette, I believe the dress was Diane von Furstenberg, borrowed. 
and my first ever pair of Valentino rock studs. They were very much a hugely expensive purchase for me back then, but I thought graduating from London College of Fashion with a first, I might as well treat myself, and I still have those shoes to this day, so they are coming up to their fifth anniversary, and I still like buying Valentino rock studs. They really are such a timeless design. <laughs> One of my early blog photos, this was, I think, a suede jacket from River Island. White high-waisted trousers, I would definitely wear them today, probably with a different top. I'm not loving the um, stripe navy effect on this top. Sunglasses I approve of, the shoes not so much, and the bag is definitely a dupe of the original um, Chloe. Was it the Fay bag that had the loop? I think that probably had just come out at this time and I was looking to get a dupe. Gosh, I cannot believe this photo shoot is as old as 2016. This was actually my first ever lookbook that I published on YouTube. Um, and I've got a Bulgari bag here. So I was working with really luxurious brands from 2016, which is incredible. The coat is from Karen Millen. Definitely something I would still wear today. I think I started to really pick up investment pieces back then. And it's when I really started to find my own style. I think my blog was so good at helping me find my personal style. And it also helped open my eyes to lots of different brands too. 2017 was definitely when I think I stopped caring what other people thought and just started wearing clothes that I loved and that I felt my best in so my style became what it always had wanted to be so really feminine really girly and yet quite elegant at the same time so 2017 was when I started doing my romantic lookbooks I started wearing a lot more from brands like Coast I started looking more at good quality materials and then to be honest that's when I stopped really using Facebook so I actually don't have many pictures after 2017 so lucky it's very well documented here on my YouTube channel. I was definitely blogging full-time at this point so I'd stopped being I'd stopped having the restraints of office wear on my wardrobe I think I got rid of any of my really smart shift dresses I did used to wear really smart dresses from retailers like Whistles and Reese for my work but then as they slowly got filtered out of my wardrobe it became much more feminine and the colours became a lot lighter and I think that by working purely on my blog and therefore having clothes that I truly loved it really allowed my personal style to flourish. This festive photo was actually taken in 2016 but to be honest I could probably post that today and I don't think anyone would really notice how old it is, maybe my complexion is a little bit more mature but I'm wearing a what looks like a cashmere high neck jumper, a camel wrap coat, it really proves that if you do buy these classic items then your style is truly timeless because I would still 100% wear this outfit today. I'm not sure if they're my Valentino sunglasses. It's hard to believe this photo is three years old because it really does look like it was taken yesterday. And darlings, I'm aware that this has been a very long video with lots and lots of throwback, but I really hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to know how your style has changed over the past decade and who knows what trends we're going to be seeing in the next 10 years, how our style is going to develop over the next 10 years. If Charlie and I move out of London, it could go a full circle. I could be going back to my wellies and barber jackets. Who knows but darlings I really hope you enjoyed today's video I will see you very soon in the next one bye